Hi everyone, uh, welcome to this talk on the new IB Diploma Mathematics uh, courses. This talk specifically is about which course to actually choose and how do we help students and, and guide them into the pathway that they should take for the new Diploma Mathematics courses. Um, you can see my Twitter handle on the front here, so I really invite you to connect with me uh, at Jennifer Wathel. Now, I probably haven't met many of you in person before, so I'd like to start off by playing a little game. It's called Two Truths and a Lie. So I'm going to show you three statements about myself, and one of the statements is actually untrue. So I want you to think about which statement is untrue. The first one is, I'm a part-time lecturer at the University of Hong Kong. The second one is I was part of the curriculum review group for mathematics, first teaching 2019. And the last statement is I just retired from teaching at secondary school after 22 years. So have a think about which statement you think is untrue. Well, I am a part-time lecturer at the University of Hong Kong. I teach on the Masters of Education uh, program and it's been a very rewarding experience. I was honoured to be part of the IB Curriculum Review Group uh, for, for Mathematics, first teaching this year. And so you can guess that it's actually the last statement is untrue. I actually retired from teaching at secondary school after 27 years. So I had a wonderful, glorious 27 years in the classroom. I'd like to say I started at 12, but I didn't. Um, and it was a very difficult decision for me to actually leave the classroom. Uh, I want to start off by, uh, with a quote by Albert Einstein to kind of set the tone of, of this talk. It is the supreme art of the teacher to awaken joy and creative expression and knowledge. And I think it is an honor and a privilege to be a teacher. Uh, I'm gonna tell you a little bit of a story about myself. I, when I was 12, my mother took me to a fortune teller in the mountains of Taiwan. And this fortune teller looked into my face and she said, you're going to be a maths educator for the rest of your life. And she also looked into my brother's face and said, you're going to be a doctor for the rest of your life. And so my brother is a practicing doctor in Sydney uh, with his own surgery. So who knew at that time that the fortune teller would actually um, be so accurate? Um, and so I've been very fortunate, as I mentioned earlier, that I've uh, experienced a glorious 27 year teaching career. So let's move on into the IB Mathematics courses. Um, the IB have developed this beautiful diagram and visual to explain the nature of the new mathematics courses. So you can see at the center of these concentric circles that mathematics is at the heart of, of the nature. And we have our five topics that surround and make up the, all of the mathematics courses. So we have number and algebra, calculus, statistics and probability, geometry and trigonometry and functions. And then on the outer circle, you can see we've got 12 concepts that the DP have come up with that I think serve as wonderful conceptual lenses and really help focus uh, your, your units when you're teaching your students. And then you can see on the outer perimeter, very important uh, components of the diploma program, which involve theory of knowledge, creativity service, activity service, the approaches to teaching and learning, and also the international mindedness. So why, why the changes? Why did the IB uh, Mathematics Curriculum Group decide to really um, develop you know, a new program, new courses, uh, and, and really move away from some of the traditional approaches in mathematics. Why? Well, let's have a look at some data because as math maths teachers, we love to look at data. So if we have a look at this bar graph, I want you to have a look at these bars and the different subject areas and, and see what do you see? What do you think? And what do you wonder? So you might see that the percentage of students taking mathematics HL is actually quite low compared to the other discipline areas. And you might think, well, what, why is that the case? Because mathematics is beautifully creative and every student should really have the opportunity to take high level. Um, and then you may be wondering, well, how can we encourage 
more students to take high level mathematics. You can also see the proportion of English literature HL students and history high level students. So a huge proportion of students actually take history HL and English literature HL. So what can we do to really encourage more students to take mathematics HL? Here are some more reasons why uh, the new diploma maths courses have been developed. So I talked about the low uptake of mathematics HL. We really wanted to give students more choice when it came to learning mathematics at, at the last two years before university. Uh, the courses have been designed really to align better uh, with the other diploma subject areas. And I'll talk a little bit about that later. Uh, unfortunately, we have a very low uptake of further mathematics HL, so that course is disappearing. And we really wanted to increase the emphasis on the use of technology with our students and enhancing learning and helping our students to understand mathematics on a much deeper and higher level. Okay, so let's go into more specifics. What are the actual changes? Uh, I'm going to show you uh, the, the framework that existed prior to 2019. So you can see that we have the PYP program which leads into the MYP and we have those two levels in the MYP, the standard and extended. And currently there are four separate courses that are offered for students. We have Mathematical Studies SL, Mathematics SL, Mathematics HL and then we have the further maths course. So it's actually this bottom tier that is actually changing. So for 2019, first teaching, very exciting. The PYP and MYP are staying the same. However, you can see in the diploma program that there's still four boxes, four options, but we have analysis and approaches SL, applications and interpretation SL, and both of those are also offered at HL. So analysis and approaches at HL, as well as applications and interpretations at HL. Now, what I want to emphasize about these four new courses is that it really looks like two pathways that we're trying to guide our students towards. So it really is looking at the analysis and approaches SLHL, or it's looking at the applications and interpretations SL. And once you guide your students and help them to understand which pathway, then we decide whether it's a standard level or higher level uh, course. So the differences in terms of these two pathways, I just want to highlight some very important um, things that were highlighted by the IB and from the guide. So one important fact is this, so you can see that both courses actually express the differences in mathematics, but at the same time, the connections between the courses. Now, what are those connections that are between the courses? So you can see that it's the same mathematical body of knowledge. We have those five topics that I showed you on the concentric circles, but both of those different pathways adopt different perspectives to the actual mathematics and ways of thinking and approaches to problem solving. And then lastly, the thing that I really want to highlight, very important idea is that the differences in the courses are really about the types of tools that are used and, and as an example, technology. So it's about using that technology, integrating that more and really preparing our students for the 21st century. So let's have a look at those actual courses and the content and, and the five topics that I discussed. So what you can see here in terms of this bar chart is on the left hand side, you've got applications SL and HL. And then on the right hand side, you have the analysis and approaches SL and HL. So what I'd like you to do now is have a look at these four bar charts and identify interesting things that you notice between applications, course, that pathway, and the other pathway, analysis. So what you might notice is that applications actually has a lot more statistics. So that's the red bar. And you can see that there's an emphasis of 52 hours and 36 hours for the applications pathway. 
What you might also notice is that there's a lot more emphasis on calculus in the analysis and approaches. So that's the blue bar. So the numbers on top of the bars actually represent the number of hours that is devoted towards uh, that content. So a lot more calculus uh, focus in anal analysis and uh, a lot more statistics basically in the applications and interpretation. Okay, so let's have a look at the two pathways a little bit more in depth. We have analysis and approaches and really it's um, analytical expertise in a world where uh, innovation is increasingly dependent on deep understanding of mathematical concepts. And the analysis pathway really is traditionally part of the pre-university mathematics course. So it is still similar to previous mathematics courses in the IB. And there is more focus on the investigation, conjecture and proof. And we really want students to be able to construct and communicate and justify uh, in terms of their mathematics learning. Now the applications and interpretations is really about technology and how we can help our students to use the technology in this very data rich world. And we really want the mathematics to be in a context that's uh, applied to different situations and use more mathematical modeling. There is still calculus and statistics in both, uh, but there is actually more emphasis on the statistics uh, in applications. And in the applications course, we really want more practical problem solving using the technology to justify conjectures. Okay, so what is the actual, um, what's the main important point about both of these approaches and pathways is that both pathways will actually integrate the use of technology. It is absolutely vital that we uh, prepare students for the 21st century and be able to use the technology to really enhance learning regardless of whichever pathway they take. So let's have a look a little bit deeper into the distinction between standard level and high level in the two pathways. So if you were guiding your students uh, towards analysis and approaches and you were trying to decide between SL or HL, your SL student will actually be very comfortable with algebraic expressions and recognition of patterns. Uh, and your HL student will actually be very strong algebraically and really be able to uh, understand proof. Now, in terms of the application interpretation, what does that student look like? So the SL student would really enjoy solving real world problems, while the HL student would actually have still good algebraic skills, but experience of solving real life problems, all with technology. Both pathways actually encourage the use of technology. Okay, so this might be a great time for you to kind of pause and reflect and think about overall what the main differences are between the two pathways of analysis and approaches and the applications and interpretation. Okay, so welcome back. Um, let's see how we would actually guide students in terms of their university choices and what math courses would be appropriate for that. Now the analysis and approaches uh, is really for the student who wants to still study substantial amount of mathematics content and it could be a, a degree in mathematics, engineering, physical sciences or e even economics. What does the application student look like? Well, they are the student that maybe might study social sciences, natural sciences, statistics, business, and even some economic psychology and also design. So how do we then develop models of teaching and structuring these courses within our schools that actually help our students uh, to choose which pathway? One of the big changes I would say in the IB Mathematics Diploma Program is that SL is now a complete subset of HL, which I think is a huge bonus when it comes to scheduling, structuring, timetabling as well. And so you can see standard level still has the 150 hours. HL has the additional 90 hours, so 240 in total. But what does that mean with that common content? What can we actually do to structure uh, the timetable and help our students to choose different pathways? So, Let's have a look at some of the models. I've got a few just for you to think about. 
Model one is if you would like to offer all four courses um, and you have uh, the teacher's skill set and experience and resources to be able to do that. Model two is that we suggest that perhaps an SLHL combined class where HL students would have an additional three lessons to the five lessons that's common. So that's something really interesting to think about. Could we actually offer an opportunity for students to learn in a more mixed ability uh, setting where SL students and HL students are actually learning mathematics together? Uh, the third model looks at analysis and approaches as two separate classes, SL and HL. And then perhaps you could combine the SLHL with the applications and interpretation students and HL students would just have three additional. Or you could swap that around. You could actually have combined analysis and approaches and have two separate applications and interpretations. So really things for us to really consider and think about now that SL is a complete subset of HL. Um, how do we go about choosing which model is best for our school and our students? It's actually dependent on a number of factors. So your precise model really depends on the needs, I think, first and foremost of your students. Uh, and then we have to look at the resources available. We have to look at the teacher's skill set and experience and strengths as well. And then we do have to look at numbers in terms of how many students are taking which course. And that obviously is going to have an effect on timetabling and scheduling um, with the whole school. Okay, I think it's time to play a game. So this final game, I'm going to present a few scenarios of different students. Uh, and these students, you know, have a kind of a, a fair idea of what they want to study at university. I'd like you to try and think about which course pathway, so either applications and interpretation or analysis and approaches, SL or HL, which would be appropriate for these particular students. So let's, let's see who the students are. Lauren, let's have a look at Lauren. So Lauren wants to study chemical engineering in the UK and she actually has looked at the Imperial College website already and she wants to study Masters in edu uh, Engineering. So which course do you think would be suitable for her? I'm hoping that you said either analysis or applications HL will actually be accepted by the university. So if she wants to do a Masters in Engineering, both HL courses are actually suitable. Okay, let's move on to Javed. So even though Javed is drawn to abstract problem solving and calculus, he intends to study economics at a top university. So what would you advise Javed? What course do you think Javed should take? One suggestion could be that he takes applications and interpretations higher level and that's because he's actually keen to learn more about statistics and mathematical modelling and that will actually suit him very well and prepare him uh, for his economics degree. Okay, let's now have a look at Roberto. So Roberto is passionate about social sciences. He's already enrolled in three higher levels which are French, psychology and history. So since he's applying to a university to study psychology, which course do you think you would actually recommend for him? I think, yes, you're right. Mathematics applications and interpretations, standard level. Okay, my last uh, student called May. So as a result of being in the IB, May has newly, a newly sparked interest in global economies. So what do you think she should, she should take? Uh, she says that she's taken a particular pathway because it has a relatively equal coverage of all math subjects. And it also says, fortunately, her desired economics program recognizes this IB course. So what do you think May should take? Okay, applications. Well, it's analysis and approaches SL would probably be suitable because she's done some research and she thinks that this actual course will prepare her better. So we really welcome your feedback. Please use this QR code and please uh, feel free to um, answer the survey and give us feedback so that we can actually uh, take that feedback on. And I also invite you to contact me at any time, email me with any questions at all. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.